I'm all the way up. Hey, people, welcome. What's going on? What's going on? We want to thank y'all for joining us on another weekly episode of Real Tough Talk. I'm Stephen J. I'm here with my partner, Ghost, and we're excited to bring you another exciting week of BQFL football. Listen, it's exciting, but one thing I want to cover first before we get right into the games. Right. You've been having, you know, you've been mentioning that you started to play Matten again. Yes, it's been a while, but I, know, I'm back on Matten. Matten's a good game. You know, obviously a popular football game, probably don't the only licensed football game out. Right. But there's a problem with the Matin that you're playing. The Matin that you're playing <laughs> is from 2012, I believe. Yeah. For PS, not four, not three, PS2. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who still has PS2s anymore, but you're excited talking about Matin for PS2. Can you tell everybody how that should make sense to them? All right, now, because it's a football show, I, mm. I'll let you bring that up, even though I know you're trying to take a shot at me. Listen. Um, I've always been a Madden fan. Always played the game. You know, I've always been a big-time Madden fan. I don't like the game now. It's too complicated. Um, it, 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 it's not just let's just play. It's too complicated and the substitution and these plays. and I just want to play. So... I tried, you know, going back to, I think you should play with what you enjoy. Like, you should wear the clothes you like. You should eat the food you like. You should do what you want and not care what nobody thinks. So, the most fun in Matt and I had was the last one made for PS2. Before they stopped making it, Matt in 2012, you can see a picture right here. For PS2. So, I, 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 I ordered it online, got it in. Had to order a memory card because, unfortunately, there's no GameStop in America <laughs> that's selling it in the store. Everything is online. And I've been playing pretty good. I, I created some players. And um, the good thing about the game, before we get too much in detail, is you can, I mean, if you don't have a problem with the guy's faces being wrong, I can, tra I can change the guy, edit the guy's name, and make him into somebody's now. Like, really quick, I'll tell you, I may... Um, um, I took um, Mark Sanchez, who we don't know where he's at right now in the NFL, and I think I made him into similar. I made him, um, I think, Baker Mayfield. So it's Baker Mayfield, but when it shows the picture, it's Mark Sanchez's picture. But my thing is, <laughs> my thing is this. You are so... I, like you are so like turned off by the new Madden now yep. that you're willing to go all the way back and there are thousands of players in this game. Right. So no matter what, you're going to find somebody that don't belong there now. Yes, absolutely. So I my thing is, for. there's nothing that you can do to make that game any better than what it is. And then, like, it's, it's hard to even explain because there's to a certain point where <laughs> a classic should remain a classic. Right. And there's no replay value for it after it becomes a classic like that, right. especially a sports game. Why do you think that the, the sports games that come out one year, after the next one comes out, the last one is like $5? Right. Because you can't go back to it. I would say the one exception is... The one exception is um, the show for um, MLB, because right. I believe that's the same game over and over again. Right. We can have a debate about that, but that's my opinion. But... That just makes no sense. That it okay. makes no sense. Before we go wrap this this thing up and we get to the show, um, the games, I'm gonna tell you, I don't give a damn. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna play the game I'm playing. I'm having fun. And if you guys wanna play me online, wait. There's exactly. no online on that game. Exactly. You have to come to the crib and play, and I, we can play in the old mat, and that's the one I play. But speaking of football, we're gonna talk about uh, uh, the first game we want to talk about is gonna be East New York versus Storm. Seven of these players played against each other. You know what I mean? East New York is coming off of a win to the Bullies. And East New York are coming in right now. They're 3-0. They've been playing a lot of good football. I mean, I think it's shouts to Prime. It's like we're all waiting for Prime to fall, and he's continuously winning. And um, they're going to play a Storm team that's coming off of a win to the Bullies. And them themselves right now are 3-0. So these are two... Um, no, they're two and one. I'm sorry, two and zero. Oh. So you got a three and zero oh team um, facing the two and zero oh team that some of the players know each other. 
And like you said, that um, that a lot of people have been waiting for Prime to fall, but I believe Prime is starting to get his stride going. He's, yeah, I agree. He's starting to see what type of player he actually is at quarterback, a person that runs when he has to, um, that keeps the ball on the ground as much as he can, and doesn't force too many passes. But the thing about it is sometimes he does have that mistake here and there where he makes a bad decision. So he's not perfect, but as long as he notices that – and he plays to that with um with that acknowledgement. I think that's one of the reasons why he's so successful. Now. And I, and I'm gonna disagree with you on the one point. Um, Prime doesn't run when he has to. Prime is running. He's yeah. a runner that happens to be able to throw. He's added a lot more running plays into their offense. So he's using his best weapon in order to be more productive as a quarterback and as an offense. And but and they play a storm team that's coming in short. But Watch Me has not played to a level that I expect them to. I mean, like I said, they won the last game 35-27. They beat the Bullies, you know. But he made several key mistakes in that game. And I haven't actually seen him play for you to say this is a dominant team as far as him being a quarterback. And the other issue is this game, they only got seven players. The thing about Watch Me that's a problem is – you, like you mentioned before, he makes several mistakes um, every and, and every now and then. The thing about it is, I think that that's his issue with right. every game. Every game, he has parts of the game where he plays well. There's parts of the game where he makes some crucial mistakes. Right. And that inconsistency back and forth in each game is what hurts them. And I think Watch Me is his own worst enemy, Right. I would say. Whenever he does something well, he does something to hurt himself. So until he gets that fixed, I think that's their main problem. Even if today they come in short, they only have seven guys. But I think that not on, that's not even the issue. I think that him re reducing the mistakes is going to get them to play that much better in this game. All right, we're going to jump right into the game. Prime with blocker from Rod. Throw the freely wide open on the sideline for a big game. Pick it up the first down. You can't give Prime this much time in the pocket. The dude can make throws when he has time, and I think Freely's becoming more and more of his weapon. We know he likes to throw the pop. Pop is one of his, his weapons that he likes to go to. Um, he also starting to go to a moolah as far as a running game, and sometimes he gets the ball to disco, but I think Freely, it's his size. He's a tight end built. He's starting to go more to him, and he makes a big play here. Third down, Prime pitches it to Harris on the sideline who runs for a decent game, getting into the three-yard line. Fourth and goal. Prime fires freely cutting in front of the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Dre and Taco leave the front open. Harris is going to get the extra point. 7 nothing, East New York. And right here, you see the defender step back. So you see Taco and Dre not defending the front of the line. Correct. They're defending back. They're following receivers in the back of the end zone. And because of that, Freely is able to cut right in front and have an opening for the easy score. Second down, watch me. Throws deep to Machine on the sideline. Picked off by Harris. Gives it back to... New East New York, if you look here, Troy is open on the sideline. I like how this kid is athletic. He usually plays quarterback. I think he played quarterback for the Ravens. Don't quote me on that. But what I like about him is because he played the quarterback position, he knows what quarterbacks like to do. He knows what receivers like to do, which makes him a better defender. He's able to pick this ball off, but we talked about Washington already, making mistakes. And this second down, he goes downfield and makes a mistake here, throwing an interception. These are mistakes that Watch Me makes, and the sad part is here, he starts out early when East New York already scored. If he um, keeps making mistakes like this, they're gonna go down and go down bad early in the game. Prime with blocking and runs in the gap for a short game. This would have been a huge game if not for Machine pushing Alex into Prime, stopping him from running any further. Machine showing the power, playing the linebacker position, and this is why I like him in that position. He shows the power, shutting down Prime's running this big play here. Third down, Prime throws to Harris, cutting in the gap for a decent game, picking up the first down. Prime then throws to Birdman in the gap, picked off by Watch Me, giving it back to Storm. And these are the mistakes that Prime makes. That's why I say he's a runner that can throw. I don't call him a full quarterback yet because these are the mistakes he makes, and he's not supposed to make them, but he makes them. And this is just a clear off-target pass that he makes here. And when he got a, he had a successful drive early in the game, 
um, Storm turns the, up the ball over, they have a chance to get further into the game with a bigger lead, and they turn over the ball with that interception there. Watch me throw the Troy in the gap who runs for a decent game. Third down, watch me throw the Taco in the gap for a decent game, pick up the first down, watch me move from the ball, trying to put some points on the ball. Remember, it's 7 nothing. Next play, watch me throw the machine. The pass is short, picked off by Freely, giving it back to East New York. If you look here, watch me gets hurt on this play. Something must have went wrong with the throw. Regardless of what happens, it's still a turnover. And again, I don't know if this is just him getting hurt on the play or whatever, or this is just a bad throw. Either way, you see the reaction on Watch Me. You saw that something bad was going to happen as soon as he released the ball and at least yet another interception on, um, on Storm. His second of the day. Prime then with three plays for a, for a good game, getting him to the 45-yard line. Fourth down. Prime throws a high in the gap for a decent game, picking up the first down. If you look here, Dre gets caught dropping back. Dre's not a great defender. I never like him defensively other than giving in the ball. Makes a big mistake here, giving up the first down. And him getting caught backing up is one of the reasons why um, that play happened. Um, he's not able to react in time because he gets caught backing up. By the time he's able to react, that's a pass that's completed right in front of him. That's something he could have prevented. Prime throws deep to Alex in the gap. Tackle just gets there late. Alex with the catch for the touchdown. Harris gonna get the extra point, 14 nothing. If you look here, you're gonna see Disco and Dre. They're guarding nobody, so they're already giving up a part of the field. Watch me, he's gonna leave the middle position to slide over and guard Harris. Alex gets beat by Alex. Taco gets beat by Alex here. Taco just gets there late, and that's how they get up the score. It was a domino effect, doom from the beginning, and that's 14 nothing. Dre here, I could have slid over to the other side where Harris is, if he does that, then watch me can stay stationary there and guard Alex. Because he had to move, as soon as he moved, that left Alex wide open for the touchdown pass. The defense got to communicate because they're not, they leave that open right there. Storm can't score before the half. That's going to take it into halftime, 14 nothing. Storm looks terrible. The defense ain't playing defense. They watch me throwing interceptions here, already through two. And yes, they're short, but there is no excuse for the play that they had in the first half. And right now, um, East New York, they have the lead. They have two touchdowns. This could have been a bigger lead, but because Prime made a few mistakes himself, it gives, um, it made the lead only go by, it only made them go up by two touchdowns. If they fix those mistakes and um, and don't turn over the ball the way that they did in the first half, I think that Gump coming away will win this game. On the throw off is dropped by Washme, recovered by Alex. East New York gets the ball. And right now when it rains and falls, they can't even catch the onside and East New York gets it back. Prime on fire brush throws deep to Birdman, who, ha who is covered, almost picked up by Taco. But if you look here, Harris was open on the sideline. Prime misses him. Third down, Prime on fire brush runs for a decent game. But Hollywood gets called for a block in the back, forces DC off the front. What do you think of the call? I think that that was a clear block in the back. Howard, um, Hollywood got there just too late. He tried to make a block, but unfortunately, he did it right behind the door. Um, and the back of the defender, that is a clear block in the back, and because of that, that results in a turnover. And this is a terrible offensive series. They had a chance to put the game away if they could score, killing Storm's momentum, but they, they're not able to make consistent drives, and they're gonna end up having a punt. Watch me, he's gonna throw the Wayne on the sideline for a decent game. Then watch me with two short plays for a decent game, picking up the first down. Second down, watch me throw deep Detroit, guarded by Harris, high and incomplete. Third down, watch me throw the Troy on the sideline who runs for a nice game near the 10-yard line. When he's not making weird throws downfield, he's chopping up the field. They make a good pickup by picking up Wayne. Wayne gives Storm another quarterback. If something ever happens and watch me have to go at receiver, Wayne can play quarterback. But Wayne is a decent guy catching out the backfield. Troy is a guy that I'm high, I highly rate. A guy who's a guy who can definitely make offensive plays and not able to move the ball to the 10-yard line. Four up and go, watch me. Throws a taco on the back of the end zone. Tipped by Freely, caught by Taco for the touchdown. Dre gets the extra point. 14-8, Storm jump back into the game. And Freely just gets a hand on it, but it's unfortunately not enough to make the, to stop that play to Taco. Listen, he played good defense, he tried his best, but it wasn't enough, and I think Taco got that, the, um, he got lucky on that play, and he was able to get the touchdown anyway. That's them finally scoring in this game. Prime with the short pass for a decent game, pick up the first down. Second down, Prime runs again for a decent game. 
taking advantage of game Wayne up Kibber. Wayne is a decent speed guy, not a big speed guy, but he got decent speed. He cannot stay with Prime, and Prime is taking advantage of that with the running game. And it's not only that. If you see certain plays, um, plays here. He doesn't fight through the blocks either. He is not a ball giver that even shows that he wants to be there. Right. He's not in, in a good position there, but they have nobody else. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're getting killed here. Third down with blocking from Alex. Prime throws a Hollywood in the gap who makes the catch for a decent game at the 15-yard line. Fourth down. Prime with block from Alex. Exact by watch me. Turnover and downs. So the question was, was this a sack? And if you look here, watch me, it's um, ballot through the block. He extends his hand. And if you look here, they were talking about his pity pat. But if you slow it down, it's too close to tell if it was a pity pat or not. It looked like he got one of the hands on like less than a second afterwards. But if it's that close, then you're better off just giving him the tag. So you're that's okay exactly, with the call? Yes, I'm okay with the call. It was close enough. That's going to be turnover one down. And that's the second time. Remember, they were up 14 nothing. This is the second time Eastern York gets stopped, giving the ball back to Storm. Right now it's 14-8. Watch me with the short pass machine in the middle for a nice game. Second down, watch me throw the disco on the gap. That's going to be knocked away by Alex. Watch me then with two passes to machine for a nice game, pick up the first down. Machine showing he could be a capable tight end. He's a, defendant, he's a defensive player that can play both ways. He can make some additions offensively when you get him the football. Third down, watch me throw the drain in the corner of the end zone. Off target, almost picked off by Fat Boy. That would have ended the game. Fourth and goal, watch me throw the disc on the front of the end zone for the touchdown. 14-14. They tie the game up. And what does hap what happens every single time the defense misses an opportunity? Every single time. Every single time the offense ends up scoring the very next yeah. play. And that's exactly what happens here. That interception there was right in Fat Boy's hands. He had it. He catches that. That's game over. He doesn't catch it. Because of that, um, Storm is able to score in the next play. That is unfortunate. That's why you don't give up any opportunity. They go for the extra point. Watch me drop the ball in the pocket. Incomplete. Stopping the extra point. You can't drop the football. Listen, yet. the funny thing is, they make a mistake on defense to give them the opportunity to score. But now... Um, watch me has opportunity to put the game away and he doesn't get the ball off He throws he drops the ball on the floor You see him arguing his guys about the ball being wet and whatever, but you're the quarterback Correct. You have to be prepared for these moments and he wasn't and because of that he gave away his he gives away his one Opportunity to walk off on this game on the throw off Paris runs to the 50 yard line But it stopped as time run out fat boy argued with the ref that Harris was hit with a shoulder and not tagged takes it into overtime. What do you think of the play? I don't see the shoulder hit right there. It's everybody's bunched up together. I don't see no outright shoulder. If you look here, he's arguing with me um, about machine making the tag and he puts the shoulder up. I kind of looked at here and, and I see the extended arms when he makes the tag. It could have been close as he's pushing from here. The follow through. Sometimes the follow through makes it look like he's um, pushing with the, or um, hitting him with the shoulder, but I don't think he is. Because of that, I, um, I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with the ref for not throwing Well, Fat Boy was kind of arguing the whole game. We yeah. see him argue earlier about a sack that you thought was close and was a good call. Then we see him argue about a shoulder, which you think was close and it's a good call. And then he drops the interception that would have ended the game and not yeah. even let it score in overtime. He needs to focus on what's going on in the field. Leave the refs alone. Because all you're doing is, these refs are human. They got emotion. It's like arguing with a ref, in, an umpire in baseball. Yeah. The strike zone is going to get a little smaller or the strike zone is going to get a little wide. It's no need, especially when you don't know how to pick your battles. The battles that Fat Boy picked wasn't working. Yeah. We're going to go into overtime. Prime gets the ball first. He's going to throw the bird mount open on the sideline for a decent game. Second down, Prime throws deep to freely open in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Harris gets the extra point. If you look here, Machine is guarding two people, calling for help. Watch me once again, not guarding nobody, and they give up the end of the touchdown. I don't think Watch me is a good defender. I think he's a better offensive player. He doesn't know how to feel the middle on defense. I think a lot of picks he gets is because of his size. We see him give up two touchdowns today, and this one is in overtime. And if you look here, he's busy watching the quarterback. And because of that, 
a receiver can line up right behind him and he Correct. won't know this machine is actually doing his job he's calling for help because he has two people on the side right watch me if he slides over here a little bit he can make a defensive play but because he's staying there and he's watching the quarterback he's not able to react he doesn't hear machine calling for help and that leads to a touchdown there first down watch me throw short to machine on the sideline that's going to be dropped Next play, watch me throws deep to drown the sideline. Drake can't hold on to it. That one is dropped. Third and long, watch me throws the taco, opening the gap. Alex and Rob miss the tag. Taco runs it all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. 21-20. The question was, was he tagged? And if you look here, you see the first tag. The person goes up to, to, to tag him here. They miss. It looks like they got one hand on him. Correct. And taco one runs. Then he gets past the other guy. That guy misses the tag here. Right. Listen, they argue that he make the tag, but I think that um that um Taco made the, the nice move at the end of the play. It seems like even he was shocked that he got past him. Right. But at the end of the day, he keeps it going. The one thing you have to understand is when the when the whistle is not blown, you do not stop running. And that's one thing that the defense often does. And because of that, Taco has a free run to the end zone. And before we talk about that extra point, because they're going to go for two for the win. Taco has six touchdowns in two games. Yeah. Four last week, he was a player of the week, and this game he has two. This kid is making these guys forget all about nine. That's one. Number two, shout to Hassan. Hassan was the one who made the call of, of a missed tag in the beginning. Me and Tone have the back end of it. We had no tag. But the beginning, which the most difficult call was made, by Hassan, and you said yourself, you can see yeah. here, this was not a tag. Fat Boy argued, practically was arguing with Hassan the whole game. It almost got physical, but Hassan made the good call, and I wanted to give him a shot before we get to the end of the game. Listen, sometimes things can get close. It can go either way. Um, you go by what the ref calls. The thing about it is if it's that close, you can't it's not a it missed call, like, correct. Yeah, you can't make it seem like it's a call that's clearly missed because, again, you may see one thing, the ref sees another. Different angles, And, yep. again, because the ref is standing on one spot, you're standing on another, that doesn't mean that it's always a clear-cut missed call by the ref because it didn't fall your way. So a lot of guys need to make sure that they don't make um, the wrong argument because it hurts their case later on. So now it's 21-20. Storm's going to go for the win. They go for the two. Watch me throw the Drake cut in the back of the end zone. That's going to be dropped. And in the game, 21-20, East New York steals the win. Was this a bad throw by Watch Me or a bad drop by Drake? This was a clear drop by Drake. Doesn't matter what the throw was. This was right in Dre's hands. That is a walk-off extra point. Two-point um, conversion. Two-point conversion to win the game, and he drops it. Dre is no longer the player that I saw when I first got to the QFL. He was a similar player like Canarsie, a guy with height that can go get the ball, but I never seen that dog in him. I uh, 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 wanted to be the best. And he's out of shape now. He's not in football shape. He's not making the catches that I seen him make in the beginning of his career when I got here. And it's a disappointment because this kid has the ability. I think he needs to go back. If he's going to play this game, if you're not going to play this game, and that's what I messed up on my career. Mm -hmm. If I would have stood in the shape that I needed to be in my whole career, I would have played longer and I would have been more known. But because I wasn't that serious about my weight and about my craft, of, because of my weight, it ended my career a little earlier. Dre's down going down that same wrong because then you start getting little nagging injuries because mm -hmm. you're carrying that extra weight. Yeah. This is a game that they could have stole with seven guys and they lost, not only because of why she make mistakes, but at the end of the day, Dre dropped this pass. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. That was a clear drop. And I'm sure that this is something that they're going to think about going into because they have another game after this. They have a doubleheader in, yep. this, game, in this week. So they're going to have to worry about that walking into this game. Are they going to take the way that they played in this game and carry it on to the next game? I don't think they can afford that. So they need to just let this game go, um, learn from their mistakes, and just um, be ready the next game. And East New York is 4-0. I, I mean, we talked about this team. We talked about Prime, and Prime has been playing like the best quarterback in the division. The guys now adding, running the ball to their offense. Mm. He's becoming the running game, which helps their offense. 
And who's their best receiver? Who's the guy on their offense that you're really worried about? I don't even know. Honestly. Exactly. Yeah. They don't have a, a clear go-to, I'm going to kill you type receiver. They don't have that. So because they don't have that type of receiver, you have to give this man prime all the credit. Yeah. Let's stop waiting for the guy to make a mistake and just say this is his year because he got this team balling out. And to be 4-0 with a bunch of offensive guys that are not jump out the gym stars or not guys that – are known by everybody. These are just guys that just come out and play. You know, they yep. play their role, and Prime has got them to a 4 0 record. Yeah. That's saying something. <coughs> and again, this team, this quarterback, everybody needs to get the credit that they deserve yep. because they're playing very well right now. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. EC York coming away with the win, beating Storm 21 20. We'll be right back. Real tough talk. What time? Next game up, Storm versus Buttercups. Storm coming off of a devastating loss in overtime to East New York. Have to play one of the teams that we both agree was the best team coming into this week in this division. And this is a team that's battling for first place yep, right now. Yep, they're 3-0 um, right now. They're 3-0. They're looking to win this game to tie with East, um, New, York. East New York. And then it's going to go down <coughs> to a point spread to see who, gets, who takes the lead at least in this week. Right. So um, they're on a mission to do that. Um, they have to go through the Storm team that just came away for the, with a <coughs> loss. I'm sure that Buttercups are, are walking into this game feeling like they can get a victory on this team too yep. because they can catch them slipping as well. And Tommy has been playing very well this season, and if he can keep it up, this, this can be another win for them. And once again, Storm has seven guys. It's not like they added another 15. This team, Buttercups, they have a good team. Mm -hmm. Tommy leads the charge. Um, they got Richie, Dobo. You know, they have Christmas. They have Mike. Mike. You know, they got some pretty good receivers that play ball. Mm -hmm. Don't have no prima donnas. They got guys that just want to play. And they're facing the team, Storm, who just got their first loss of the season and also only have seven guys. So you got to know that. This team is looking to capitalize on Storm being shorthanded. And I think that they have a perfect opportunity to do so. If um if Tommy can manage the game that they that 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 he normally manages the way he normally plays, if he can manage the game the way he normally does, I think that he can be successful. He's a he's a quarterback that likes to keep the ball on the ground as yeah. well. Um similar to how Prime does. Um he's a person that throws on the run, very accurate at times. And He's good with, you know, with the chemistry with his receivers. Right. You know, they're always on the same page when they need to be, and that's why they're 3-0 and right now. And if they can do that in this game, they have a good opportunity to get another win, knowing that the Storm defense is short. All right, we're going to jump right into the game. Third down, after a short pass, watch me throw the tackle open on the sideline. That one is going to be dropped. After a short run, first down, watch me on five rushes, sacked by Mike. Been able to get um, watch me on the big sack. Watch me, then throws a disco on the gap for a decent game. Third down, watch me, throws a taco on the gap to get him to the five yard line. Fourth down, watch me, throws a chore in the front of the end zone. Drop, turnover on downs. Question was, was this a pass interference? Right here, it looks like the, the, the defender is, is going to make contact. I think that's a dobo on this play. Um, Troy was looking for the flag, but I don't think that it was enough contact to merit a pass interference. At the time, Adobo was extending his hand, but he didn't make contact to the point where it affected Troy's uh, movement towards the ball. He just dropped it. Yes. So at the end of the day, pretty much you simplify what I explained. He just dropped the ball. There was not enough contact from Adobo to merit a flag, and because of that, that that's a that's And we see Machine arguing with Watch Me. Yeah. Machine has been arguing with Watch Me all season. What do you think is going on there? Well, on this play here, Watch um, Machine is arguing that Watch Me did not wait for the play to develop. Um, Machine, if you look here, he's cutting in the back of the end zone before he gets a chance to separate from the defense. Watch Me is already throwing the ball to Troy. Right. But again, that's a, 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 a hard argument to make because this pass is right in Troy's hands. Right. So again, Watch Me didn't do anything wrong, but me, um, uh, Machine feels like something he's not been going for all season and that's kind of why they've been bumping heads lately. Tommy on first down runs on the sideline for a decent game. Third down Tommy throws a rich open in the middle for a nice game picking up the first down. 
Tommy then throws a adobo and back in the end zone. Almost picked off by machine, but it's offside on the defense. Huge call. Tommy runs on five rush to get to the five yard line. Second and goal. Tommy throws a adobo in the front of the end zone. Off target, picked off by Taco. We see Taco doing it defensively now. Mm -hmm. We seen him get touchdowns. He has six touchdowns in two games. And now he has an interception to add. The kid is playing both sides of the ball. If there's an MVP in this league, which I don't know if the league is doing because it's short sort of season, this kid will have to be on the list. Listen, he is literally <coughs> trying his best to take carry this team on his back. Yeah. And he's been doing it throughout both of the um both of these games and last week. So this kid is doing whatever he has to to help his team win. But getting getting on Tommy, this was a horrible pass. This was supposed to be a touchdown pass to Adobo, clearly off target, thrown to Taco, who is behind Adobo. And because of that, one bad pass leads to a turnover. And I didn't have to because that was a decent drive run by Tommy all the way to that end. Watch me with three passes for a nice game, pick up the first down. Watch me throw the drain in the gap for a decent game. Second down, watch me throw the machine in the gap who runs near the five yard line. Third down, watch me find Sacco in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Rich lets him go in the back. Wayne gets it for the touchdown. Wayne gets the two point conversion, eight nothing. And this kid, Taco. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Yo quiero Taco Bell. What? You're not even saying that right. Seven touchdowns in two games. Listen, that is ridiculous to have seven touchdowns. In three games. In this three is third games. Game. Yes, three games. But that's still a lot of touchdowns to make yep. in three games. Three games. So this kid is doing I don't, I don't see anybody stopping. Look at Taco Bell. Listen, obviously they don't because they can't stop him. They must not watch the show. Yes, so this kid has been killing. And Rich, you can't let a person like this who's been killing every team he faces um, get open, you have to stay with him because he lets him go at the last second that leaves Taco open for that touchdown. The kid is eating. That's the bottom line. You think he's and eating Taco Bell? That could be a good promo. We gotta have to call those people and maybe get Taco a Taco commercial. Okay. That was a little corny. Yeah. But it's possible to get it. Tommy on right now is eight nothing bottom line. Tommy on first down throws it to Mike, open on the sideline, off target, incomplete. After a short pass, getting him the first down, Tommy with block it runs for a decent game. Tommy on second down with another run for a decent game. Then on fourth down, Tommy on five rush throws a Mike in the corner, knocked away by machine, turnover on downs. Who is this imposter? Call the APP. Find me the real Tommy because this ain't him. Storm has seven guys. Don't sit down and tell me it's their defensive strategy. This Tommy here is an imposter. He is playing terrible. What's the ABB, ACC, ACS. But what, what do you look? What, what does that mean? Like, We're who? looking for for Tommy. So is he a missing person? Or exactly. Because uh, you you, you create organizations that find people. Like what connections do you have with the? I'm not even gonna get into that because the government may take me next. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, um, I don't know what's going on with Tommy. He seems out of rhythm. He's not throwing accurate passes. He was running the ball well in the first drive. Which is what he does. And then after that, I think everything just started to fall apart, and it's hurting him in this game now. Watch me. Rolls right. Pitches to Troy on the sideline for a decent game. Second down. Watch me. Throws it to Machine. Open on the sideline. Overthrow. Incomplete. Third down. Watch me on five rush. Runs in the middle. Pitches it to Machine to get them to the 47-yard line. On fourth down. Watch me. Runs, but it's sacked by Mike. Mike is flagged for offside. Mike believed he was blocked before run. the run. Storm gets a first down. What do you think of this play? So basically, Wifey was attempting to run. Mm -hmm. Mike comes over and makes the sack. But they were never running the ball. Mike was never hit. He gets the offside flag, which gives them a first down. What do you think of the play? And I think right here, I see exactly what Mike thought that he was that was gonna happen. Right. But unfortunately, he got tricked on this play. Right. Because Machine steps up like he's going to block. What Mike does is he initiates the contact first right. by anticipating that he's getting blocked. Get so he steps up, makes contact with Machine first, and then runs in to, to um, right. tag Watchman. Because of that, that is an offside yep. on Mike because he initiated the contact first. He crosses over, yep. and that's what leads him to a flag. That could have been a stop. Here. Great call by the officials that shoot up for this call also. <laughs> and we saw so far... All the calls is right. When we're wrong, especially if I'm the one that made the call we're wrong, we're going to say it on the show. But so far, the rest has been right. 
Great call by them, getting them the first down. Second down, watch me, throw the taco on the sideline. Picked off by Rich, giving the ball back to Buttercups. If you look here, Wayne was open on the opposite side. And after just getting a first down, Mr. Watch Me was not watching the field and gets picked off by Rich. I don't know what's going on. This is one of the mistakes that we've been talking about by Watch Me. And because of that, he throws an interception right to Rich. Um, like I said, Tommy is not playing his best. But when you're not playing the way you need to either, you're not going to help yourself. This was your opportunity to take over the momentum in the game, and you give it right back to the opposing team. Last play before I have Tommy throws the screen to Christmas, <clears throat> runs all the way to the two-yard line, but it stops short of the end zone, taking us into the half, 8 nothing. Buttercups are playing terrible, but I'll put it all on Tommy. Defense is playing good. They only gave a one touchdown. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know. Is this Tomcito? Tommy Z? Tommy Vito? A Tommy or somebody. But this is not the Buttercup starting quarterback, Tommy. He's somebody, but he's not him. I don't know. Listen, what TV you be watching? I don't see where you get all of this from, but it's whatever. I'm not even going to get into that. But right here... The, the problem with Storm is, first, they were not putting games away and giving an opportunity for other teams to come back in the game. Right now, they're not seizing the opportunities giving them, giving them by the Buttercups. And because of that, they're only ahead 8 nothing. Leave it to Taco to make a big play to help them yeah. score. But other than that, nothing else is going on in this game. Either they're going to have to go to Taco for the rest of the game, or people are going to have to step up and watch me is going to have to play better at quarterback in this game. Otherwise, um, the Buttercups are going to come right back in this game. Second down on five rush. Tommy scrambles, throws a Christmas open on the sideline, incomplete, off target. Third down, Tommy with block and runs for a decent gain in the first down. Tommy on second down, throws a Christmas in the middle for a nice gain. If you look here, watch me drifting in the middle, guarding nobody. Watch me is a terrible defender. He went from decent to bad to terrible. The guy does not know how to read the field. He's drifting, but he's drifting to nobody, leaving the middle open. Big play by Tommy. Same mistake as last time. He's watching the quarterback. Yep. And because he's watching the quarterback, the field. he doesn't see the receivers that's lining up around him. He's not guarding his zone, and guys are lining up around his area. And because he's moving out where the court, where the receivers are, are going to be at, all they do is they shift and run into the gap that he left and leaves them wide open for big plays like that. Third down, Tommy throws a local on the sideline, who dodges the tag by Troy. Machine misses him next tag, and local dives into the end zone for the touchdown. Watch me get the interception. Local gets called for, for taunting, but right now, 8-6, they're back in. And this was great moves by, Lo um, by local on, um, on this play here. Yeah. Catches, um, catches Troy off guard yep. for making that sudden move. Troy thinks that he has him, but Loco gets right past him and then cuts inside, getting past Machine. By the time Machine can able to make a play, yep. he's already um, diving into the end zone. That is a way for Loco, um, that is a great way for Loco to get the touchdown with some quick moves there, getting them finally into the end zone. Second down, watch me on five rushes, sacked by Mike. Third down, watch me scrambles with blocker from Dre, throws the taco, cutting in the middle for a decent game. If you look here, this goal is wide open in the end zone, so I'm going to get the first down on the next play. He's only looking for Taco. This goal is wide open in the end zone. The guy can make a camp, camp fire with a tent, put some coffee on it, has some franken beans, and watch me still would not have found him. They get the first down, but this can affect you for the rest of the game. And that shows that he's not spanning the whole field. The defense notices that, and they're going to play you accordingly. The thing about it is you have Troy, who's on the other sideline, calling for Watch Me to look at Disco downfield. You see him wide open. Nobody's there. It didn't matter if you hung it up for days. Nobody would have got there in time to defend that play, but Watch Me misses that. And though they get the first down, that was a missed opportunity there. Watch me throw the taco, cutting in the middle, that's dropped. Second down, watch me throw the taco, cutting again in the middle for a nice game. If you look here, Arnold gets beat in the middle, giving taco that lane. Third and goal, watch me find Disco, cutting in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Disco fakes to the outside, then cuts inside, beating Ricky. Taco gets the extra point, 15-6. And this is an old school move by Mr. Old School Disco. Catches the young buck with a nice out in 
and that's taking it oh school 15 6. And listen, I guess that's the, the, the that goes with the Monica Disco. Listen, because yep. he's taking it back. So nobody does a disco no more. Nobody yeah. knows what that is. Yeah. So he's taking it. Oh, school. Okay. And the thing about it is, Rich, by the time he's able to react, he's already beat. Yeah. He's trying to follow him the best he can, but because Disco is moving in, I'm moving outside. The defender has a problem with following the quarterback. He doesn't see the extra move on the inside, but as soon as Disco makes this move, he's open and he gets the pass from Watch Me for the touchdown. First down, Tommy throws a mic on the foul line. The ball is caught, but the ref says there's only one foot in bounds. Incomplete. Was this a catch? And this one, I think that this one was really hard. I'm going to show you here. And right here, as he gets the ball right in his chest, you see two feet down. So right, the, it, it, the thing about it, it's a split second that he had his foot down and then afterwards one of his feet lifted into the air, he falls out of bounds. But it's a split second that you really have to slow it down to see this. So but it was missed. It was missed. Like I said, I, I'm not trying to be too nice to the refs, but you got to be superhuman to really see this. But because it's there, that shows that it was a misplay right there. Second down, Tommy throws a dofo on the sideline, bobbled, and that one is going to be dropped. Third down, Tommy with blocking, runs in the middle for a nice game, picking up the first down, one minute left. Tommy, remember, it's 15 to six. Tommy on second down with a screen pass to Christmas on the sideline for a decent game. Third down, Tommy throws a flip, cutting in the back of the end zone, flip overruns it, tip by flip, drop by Christmas, and if you look here, Christmas is going crazy. He's kind of the energy on this team. He's the guy to have fun. I've never seen him react this way. Last down, Tommy Rose left. Those are dope on the back of the end zone. High, incomplete, end of the game. Storm coming away with the win over Buttercup, 15 to six. And I'm gonna go over the last two plays. If okay. you see here on this play here, as Tommy throws the ball to flip, if you look, it's hard to say if this ball is to flip or if this ball is to Christmas in the back of the end zone. Right. If you look here, Christmas is cutting in the back. He's looking for the ball. He's going for it, but Flip overrunning the ball, thinking it's for him. He reaches out and he tips the ball. Because of that, the ball ends up incomplete before Christmas can get a hand on it. If he Flip wasn't there, this may have been a touchdown to right. Christmas. So was it that he was throwing to Flip and Flip overran it, or Flip thinking it was for him, he ends up deflecting the pass and causing it incomplete when that was for Christmas. So right. who knows? It's hard to say on, that, on either end. That's only for Tommy to answer. But the next play here, Tommy throws it. Adobo's open in the back of the end zone, but the pass is high. Adobo gets our fingers on it, but he can't hold on to it. So that is a high pass. If Tommy would have threw it a little bit more accurate, Adobo would have been able to catch his pass. This would have been a touchdown. So two missed opportunities yeah. on the two last plays of the game. And that's all on, listen. That one, the, first, the, 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 the play before the last one, I can't put that on Tommy. Right. I think that's all on Flip. That was a mistake on him. But that last pass, that was all Tommy. And that's what you've been seeing from Tommy all throughout the game. Buttercup played terrible. They played against a team that had seven guys. A team that just kept coming off of an overtime mm. loss. And you only put up six points. Six points. And you lose by two scores. Can't happen. I guess that it's a wake-up call to us before we deem Buttercup's the next breast coming of the Lord since the Lord. This team lost a team with seven guys. They helped Storm jump right back in it because Storm would have been three and two. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. They'd have been two and two if they lose this game. Mm -hmm. Now they're three and one. Second place. Tie with the Buttercups. Yep. Who gets the tiebreaker? Storm. Storm, of course. This is a game that Buttercups gave away. Shout to Storm. Shout to Taco. This kid is, and that's shout to the Commissioner because with this, these players playing in this type of division. With a season with some good players, rather than just all C2 bad players, these kids are going to get better. And as you can see, Taco's one of them. This kid yeah. is trouble. And the thing about it is he's hungry. He likes playing, being 
known as a great player, upcoming player. <coughs> and to be able to see it on film makes him better because yeah. he can watch it and see the fruits of his labor. Yeah. The thing about it is, you know, he needs a little bit more work on defense. Yeah. I think that he gets exposed on defense every now and then. Correct. So that's his... That's the um the his short Achilles end. Heel. Yeah. yeah. That's what he has to work on. But offensively. But his offense... It's showing improvement every single week. Every he single shows week. something different. Yep. He shows something more. Yep. This show, this is a, a person that's improving as he plays the game. Yep. And that's a, a player that you would want, anybody would want that on their team. Yeah. But right now, Storm has, and he's one of the reasons why they're winning games right now. We're going to wrap this one up. Storm coming away with the win over Buttercups, 15-6. to six. We'll be right back. Real Tough Talk.